Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. Biodiesel, it's an alternative renewable fuel, and Steve Mello is the senior vice president of Twin Rivers Technology. It's the only company on the east coast of the U.S. now producing biodiesel fuel, and Doug Wheaton represents Massport, and that's a, a transportation entity in the Boston area, and they're using biodiesel. They're moving plenty of bus with biodiesel. Steve, what's biodiesel? Biodiesel is a renewable replacement for diesel fuel. You can make it out of vegetable oils such as sunflower or soybeans. You can make it out of recycled feedstocks such as beef tallow, cooking grease from a McDonald's restaurant, etc. Now, Rudolf Diesel, he's the guy who got uh, the notion of the diesel engine working. He apparently, from the when literature... He, when, when he first did his experiments with the diesel engine, it ran on peanut oil. Peanut there oil. was no diesel oil at that point. <laughs> right. So, I mean, we've been living for years now with this uh, energy crisis over our head. You know that uh, we need more and more gasoline and we have this enormous trade deficit because we're uh, important. But what you're saying is that it's quite feasible to run a machine like a diesel oh, engine. Right. It's, it's more than feasible. In Europe, many, many cities in Europe, uh, in Switzerland, Germany, and Austria run all their buses on 100 percent biodiesel. Because fuel prices are so high in Europe, biodiesel prices actually sometimes are even less than regular diesel prices. In the United States, diesel, of course, is a wholesale commodity traded on futures markets, very cheap. It, the clean air rules and the alternative fuels laws, excuse me, what will drive demand for biodiesel. Now, what do they use in Europe in, to make the biodiesel out of there? Mostly it's canola oil in Europe. Uh, canola oil? That's right. How come they don't use soybean oil? I mean, we, we do the soybean, they do the canola? Well, each country use, maximizes its weather in the oilseed market. The United States soybeans grow the best for two reasons. One is the weather. Two is the soybean meal is needed for the cattle. And there's greater soybean meal rather than oil content in soybeans. In Europe, canola produces much more oil and less meal. They don't raise cattle to any the extent that we do in Europe. Now, Twin Rivers Technology, where are you based? And how do you do it? How do you take sure. soybeans in and uh, have diesel fuel come out? Well, first of all, Twin Rivers is in Quincy, Massachusetts. We took a uh, Procter & Gamble the plant that had been closed, making biodiesel neatly enough is like making soap. I guess there was one closed on Staten Island in New York as well. You take vegetable oil. We don't actually crush the soybeans. We let somebody else do that. You take the oil in. You put it through a fatty acid plant is what we have. What you do is you pull the glycerin off these fats. The glycerin you save later to make stuff like lipstick or suppositories or any of a thousand and one items. What you have left is, is, is what's called fatty acid, long chain fatty acid. You attach an alcohol, it could be ethanol, it could be methanol, it could be isopropyl alcohol. You attach that onto the fat, what comes out at the bottom is biodiesel, ready to go. You can use biodiesel in a diesel engine blended anywhere from 1% to 100%. Now, Doug, not only can biodiesel replace petroleum, but it's, it's cleaner than petroleum. Yeah, we've seen, uh, since we've been using the fuel for about three months, we've seen uh, a very impressive uh, reduction uh, just at the tailpipe, just visually, uh, the amount of emissions. Uh, the buses are running cleaner, and uh, uh, so far it's been very positive uh, in how the uh, public has reacted and uh, uh, other regulatory entities uh, such as EPA. Everybody's very excited about the program. Why did Massport go into the biodiesel? Uh, I mean, there's other alternative fuels, hydrogen, uh, natural gas, I think, is uh, promoted. Why, why biodiesel? Well, we have we have a multifaceted uh, alternative fuel program, uh, but biodiesel is uh, uh, right now maybe the most important cornerstone because it's been the easiest for us to uh, move into our uh, infrastructure and use within our fleet. Uh, it's been very transparent in terms of its impact. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, procuring the fuel, mixing it, and and running it. There's very little change in how we uh, run our fleet. I mean. But the engine, a diesel engine, do you, Steve, do you have to kind of retune it to work on soybean oil? I mean, well, there's, there's different strategies. First of all, you don't have to do anything to a diesel engine to run soybean oil. I mean, to run biodiesel, excuse me. Um, there are opportunities to do some different things to it to maximize your emissions reductions. For example, if you run biodiesel straight in an engine, you're going to probably get really good particulate PM10 emissions reductions. But there's a halfway point where you can actually retime your engine and get NOx reductions and PM10 reductions, and of course all the other parameters are reduced as well. Now the problem most people have with diesel engines is that they're so damn smoky, I mean particularly the buses. Oh. 
those diesel buses uh, uh, in New York in particular, a small little island with zillions of diesel buses. But what you're saying is that biodiesel makes the notion of a diesel engine a, a clean machine? That's right, Carla. Emissions reductions with, when you use biodiesel um, are, are very large. Hydrocarbon emissions are reduced 50 percent, carbon monoxide emissions over 50 percent, um, particulate emissions 45 percent. You can retime that and get maybe a 25 percent NOx decrease. Of course, there's no sulfur emissions. The CO2 emissions are way down because the plant is only spewing the di carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that it took out when it grew itself. And of course, air toxics, poisons like benzene, xylenes, etc. They're not in biodiesel. And you guys are suggesting that with these new federal standards on clean air, biodiesel will fit right in and be a competitive form of, of locomotion uh, to uh, well, natural gas or electricity. Electricity has been boomed. Electric buses, electric cars and stuff has been uh, boosted as something that would be uh, appropriate to meet the new clean air standards. But you're saying that biodiesel will do the same thing? Yeah, we're looking at biodiesel because it's... Uh we're running about 28 buses, which are uh, probably about 15% of our overall fleet of vehicles at the airport. And it's just been very easy to move it into the, into the operation. Uh, other fuels such as uh, compressed natural gas or electric vehicles, uh, they, there's definite applications that we're, uh, places where we can use them at the airport. But the infrastructure development, uh, some limited ranges, especially with electric vehicles, limits the number of vehicles that you can actually use uh, those uh, technologies. Uh, the way we see biodiesel, it, it's, it's attractive for a larger number of, uh, of vehicles. People have been screaming about the dependence on oil for many years, but the oil companies uh, seem to continue to be very, very powerful elements in our society. Steve, how did the, the big oil companies fit into this equation? Um, different companies have different attitudes on that. There are some companies that don't want to lose any share of the diesel market. There are other companies that are a little more forward-thinking and see that um, biodiesel lets diesel stay in the game through biodiesel diesel blends. Um, back to what Doug was saying, there's all these alternative fuels, they all have their place. Clearly biodiesel's place is in big stuff, in, in loaders and buses and, you know, trucks and trains, that kind of a thing, any place where there's compression engines. The forward-thinking oil company, of course, realizes that he stays in the game. Again, uh, biodiesel faces some of the battles in the years ahead that ethanol was faced with with the oil companies, where they just don't want to lose any market share. It's that simple. Steve, where can people get in touch with your company? Oh, the, uh, great. Uh, we're, at, uh, we're in Quincy, Massachusetts. Uh, the, the phone number is there, 617-472-9200. Call and ask for me, and I'll be happy to talk to you. Personally, thanks, guys, for being with us. Thank you for watching Enviro Close-Up.